We have looked at a mass spring system, which is one example of simple harmonic motion. We're now going to look at a pendulum. For a pendulum, we have an object which is at an angle theta with the vertical. <sighs> Remind me, what was the condition for simple harmonic motion, Hillary? Um, I'm sorry, what? No, I'm just talking the uh, general, not that was for a mass spring system. For a general system, it's just negative omega squared times x. Okay, so for a, uh, a pendulum, we need to prove that a pendulum is in simple harmonic motion and be able to figure out the equation for the position as a function of time for the pendulum. Now, the, re the restoring force in a mass spring system was the force of the spring. Who can remind me what is the restoring force for the pendulum? Um, not quite the force of gravity, right? Because the force of gravity is straight down. The equilibrium position would be right here. The restoring force, hence the acceleration, needs to be toward the equilibrium position and proportional to the distance from the equilibrium position. Sierra? The force of gravity, we'll call it tangential. So it's the force of gravity which is tangent to, so this is the force of gravity tangential, this would be the force of gravity perpendicular to the motion. And it's the force of gravity tangential to the, um, <coughs> the tangent to the circle which is going to cause the restoring force. So when we sum the forces, in the tangential direction, we get the force, the negative of the force of gravity tangential, because it's down to the left, is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the tangential direction. The force of gravity tangential is negative mg sine theta mass. Now, the tangential acceleration is the second derivative of the uh, arc length as a function of time, right? Well, we happen to know that S equals L times theta, where L is the length of the string, or S equals R theta, right? Bless you. In this particular case, S equals L theta. So if S, the arc length, equals L, the radius, times the angle, if we take the second derivative of this whole equation, we get that the second derivative of the arc length as a function of time is equal to, well, L, the radius, doesn't change, times the second derivative of the angular position as a function of time. So we can replace, um, we can replace the, ooh, we can do this first though. Go ahead, Michael. That's it. <laughs> well stated, thank you. <laughs> the second derivative of the arc length as a function of time with L times the second derivative of the angular position as a function of time. So negative G sine theta equals L times the second derivative of the angular position as a function of time. Rearranging this, because we want to get into something that looks like this, we're going to get the second derivative of angular position as a function of time is equal to, what are we going to get? Negative g over l times the sine of theta. Is that a d or not? That's a d. I'll fix it just a moment. <laughs> so, the problem is, is that over here we have x and x. Over here we have theta and sine theta. We should have theta on the right. We do not. We only have sine. We have sine theta instead of only theta. So here's the thing. 
for small, quotes, angles, sine theta equals theta. This is the small angle approximation. This is why for simple harmonic motion of a pendulum, it is only considered to be in simple harmonic motion for angles that are less than 15 degrees. Last year, what is it according to the, your book? 10. It actually says in your book 10 degrees. It's uh, said in the book last year 15 degrees. The truth of the matter is it only, it's just how much percentage error you want you are going to say are, is okay. Right? Because the sine theta is actually only equal to theta for an angle of zero degrees. It's very close for other angles. Note this is only true in radians. And so it's true for small angles. How we define small angles is up to, I guess, us. I don't know. Anything less than 15 is fine for me. Um, so for small angles, we can say that the sine theta is equal to theta, and therefore, the second derivative of the angular position as a function of time is equal to negative g over L times theta. Therefore, the angular frequency of a pendulum is equal to what? <laughs> Rohan? I was just whispering to myself. Uh, how'd that go for you? Yes. Pretty awesome. Good. So what'd you get? <laughs> um, I said square root of g over L. Omega squared. Right here. Right. So omega, the angular frequency, is equal to the square root of g over L. <laughs> The equation for angular velocity, Sierra? Angular velocity. Uh, change. Oh, angular velocity or angular resistance. So angular velocity is change in theta over change in time. For a change in theta of 2 pi, the time is going to be the period. Therefore, the period is going to be equal to 2 pi times the square root of L over G. Which hopefully looks for better. So notice for uh, your mass spring system, the equation was the position as a function of time is equal to the amplitude times the cosine of omega t plus phi. For a pendulum, rather than talking about a linear position, we're actually talking about an angular position. So the angular position as a function of time is going to be equal to the amplitude times the cosine of omega t plus phi. Now, the amplitude for a um, pendulum is going to be, and we usually specify clearly here by saying it is theta maximum, because that amplitude is going to be the amplitude in uh, radians or degrees, depending on which you're talking about. 